Well, good morning, New Life Church. Uh, hopefully you're watching this and uh, everything's working well and we're streaming. Uh, if, you've, if you notice any problems, please, please do let us know uh, so that we can make some changes to that. Well, this morning, uh, you've got myself and Don uh, has joined join me. Um, Paul was meant to be uh, preaching this morning, but because Zion had a temperature last week, he's had to be in isolation, so he's back out on Wednesday, as it were, so uh, he'll be preaching next Sunday instead of this Sunday. But I'm going to be sharing a bit from the Lord's Prayer uh, as we gather uh, this morning, and we're going to have a time of worship. We're also going to share communion together and pray and read the Word and just hopefully bring you some encouragement. Um, it's very strange to feed, you know, live streaming like this. Uh, me and Donna are here on our own. We are two meters apart. We've done a measurement this morning, and uh, we're making sure we're, we're well away. But we do hope you're keeping well, and we hope that this time together will just be a real time of encouragement and blessing to you. Just a couple of announcements to share with you. So first of all, um, as leaders, we've decided that we're going to be fasting and praying at 7 o'clock on Sunday evenings uh, while this current situation with coronavirus is going on. And so that gonna, that's going to start this evening. So it's 7 o'clock tonight. If you would like to join us, we'd love to know that there's other folk in the church who are joining with a time of prayer for our nation, for the nations, and for our community. And if it's safe to do so and it's not going to affect you medically, um, then please also join us in fasting. Perhaps miss an evening meal or fast something else if you can't fast food. Um, to give ourselves to the Lord and devote ourselves so that we can uh, really step into all that God is doing and hear his voice through this chaos and intercede for our nation. So seven o'clock tonight, we're going to be doing that as leaders and we'd love for you to join us. I just want to say a big thank you for all of you who have come forward uh, to help our community, supporting the pastoral care team who have been very active this week, for those who are housebound or, or uh, vulnerable and can't get out and self-isolating. And we just thank you to our pastoral care team, first of all, but also those who have signed up and said we're willing to do shopping and drop off medication and I know there's many others doing that in the community with those who aren't even part of New Life Church which we really encourage you to do so so don't forget to pick up the phone um, just check in on your neighbors make sure that we're being a light to our community in this time and keep going it's just wonderful to hear how we really are being the love of Christ in our community as I said earlier we've got communion this morning and we're going to be sharing that a little bit later on and so what we want you to do is to partake in that with us virtually. Uh, we've never done this before, but hopefully this will work okay. So make sure you've got some juice. If you don't have red juice, don't worry. Just use water or if you've got some crackers or some bread. And as we partake in communion together, we'll let you know when we're coming to that time so that you can do so as well in your own homes and sense the nearness and the presence of Jesus as we remember and reflect on his death, burial, and resurrection. And kids... We've got a song for you this week. We're going to do Shine. Um, so we know you know the words for this, and we know that you know the, the moves or the actions. So we're going to be singing that a little bit later on because we realize you haven't got New Life kids. I bet you're missing that. But we're going to uh, interact with that together, and we're going to worship God together in song as well. Hopefully you got the email this week with the song lyrics for our worship song so you can follow with them. And uh, yeah, we're just looking forward to spending this time with you, and we hope that we can fix our eyes upon the Lord and hear from him and sense his presence with us wherever we are this morning. So Don's going to open up with some scripture and prayer, and then we're going to worship the Lord together in song. I've chosen, <clears throat> chosen to read a well-known psalm, Psalm 91, um, in my study Bible here. It's headed, My Refuge and My Fortress. And I'll just read the introductory note in the commentary, because I think that's very helpful. This tender and intimate psalm describes the confidence that the believer may have through all manners of dangers and challenges. The psalm speaks about the faithful person as he addresses him directly as you and gives him words to say as I. Some have suggested that all of these are Israel speaking as a whole, but the situations in view in the psalm are those primarily faced by particular persons. Of course, Israel as a whole finds refuge in God and is covered by his divine wings, but the nation's members see this in their individual lives as well. So here we go, Psalm 91. 
He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to fall you, befall you. No plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you praise this morning that you are indeed the Most High. Lord, you are reigning in the heavenly, in the heavenly places you have all authority, Lord, over what is going on in our lives and here on planet Earth. And Lord, we cry out to you this morning. Lord, we, we want to lift your, your name on high. We want to praise you. We want to give glory to the name of Jesus, your, your Son and our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you came to save us. You are the only name given amongst men by which we must be saved, your word says. And Lord, we, we look to you this morning. Thank you that you are our salvation. Thank you that you deliver us from danger, from evil. Lord, we pray for this poor suffering world and the, the nations of the earth. Lord, we, we pray for our prime minister. We pray for the queen. Lord, we lift up our leaders. We ask that you will give them wisdom, Lord, in this time of crisis. But Lord, we thank you that we can turn to you. Thank you that you know our needs, Lord, and you love us. You are faithful. You are loving God. We just praise you and worship you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Don. Uh, we're going to worship the Lord now together. We're going to sing Hosanna, and then we're going to sing Our God is Greater. So join with us, and uh, if you're feeling, hey, that feels a bit weird singing to a TV screen, just think of me and Don. We're singing to you, the camera. Uh, it feels very odd, but join with us. We can worship God together uh, this morning, and uh, do apologize if there's some flickering on your screens at the moment. We, we, we've tried to fix that, but it seems to have come back. Uh, so hopefully it's not interrupting anything that you're watching and uh, too much of a distraction. But let's worship the Lord together. Praise is rising. Praise is rising.
Welcomed here, Lord, in our praises. Be enthroned, Lord, we pray. We declare your greatness, your power, and your strength and your might, your wonder and your magnificence. We declare that you are stronger and greater over every situation. And we look to you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Sing, our God is greater. Water you turned into wine You opened the eyes of the blind There's no one like you There's none like you And into the darkness you shine God is greater and our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, oh, our God is. No one is greater, no one is higher than any other. You are great and all. Water you turned into wine. Water you turned into wine. You opened the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Into the darkness. Into the darkness you shine. And out of the ashes we rise. No one like you, Lord, there's none like you, our God. Oh, our God is greater and our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God 
fix our eyes upon you this morning, Lord. How great you are. How great you are, Lord. You're magnificent, strong and mighty to deliver. And we rest under the shadow of your wings, Lord. We declare your lordship, your sovereignty and your power this morning. We lift our eyes up to the hills, for that's where our help comes from. The maker of heaven and earth. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Ah, wonderful to be able to worship together. We're going to have our kids' song uh, now. So adults, if you've got uh, your kids nearby, parents, grab your kids and bring them in front of the TV screen or the laptop or the iPad, however you're watching this. Uh, we're going to sing Shine. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to get yourselves together. And kids, if you know the actions, then do all the actions and uh, sing as loud as you can and uh, let's have some fun as we sing these uh, words shine from the inside out I don't claim to be an expert on the actions so don't, <laughs> don't on, watch Tom. me and expect me I to do it expertly you were going to do the actions for us. <laughs> uh, if, if David Morgan was here he would do the actions uh, yeah yeah David would maybe I'll, I'll have a go <laughs> <laughs> we may be you know sending Don to new life kids when we get back to normal <laughs> okay let's sing shine from the inside out two
from the inside out that the world will see you live in me shine Woo! from the inside out that the world will see you live in me wow hopefully that's been your workout for sunday morning kids we hope you enjoyed that song and what a great truth of that song at this time that we can shine the light of jesus to our neighbors to our friends and to our parents and other siblings that are at home to be the light that Jesus wants us to be as we look out to care for one another. So kids, be encouraged. Keep doing it. Know that Jesus loves you with an everlasting love and know that his Holy Spirit fills you so that you can shine bright for him. Bless you guys. Don, we're going to move to uh, communion. I have a communion reading for us from John's Gospel, chapter 6, and starting at verse 48, Jesus is speaking here to the Jews in the synagogue at Capernaum. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate, he's talking about the manna in the wilderness, not like the bread the fathers ate and died, Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. Turn my microphone on, might help. Thanks, Don. So as we come to reflect on communion, and it's not a memorial service, it's a thanksgiving service, it's a celebration. We know the presence and the nearness of Jesus it's going to invite you to take whatever you have in your house as those uh, emblems. So I'm going to take the bread and the juice. And the bread representing the body of Jesus that was broken for us. It says that he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sin. And his body, which was broken, we take in remembrance and in thanksgiving. And we know the nearness of Jesus and his death, burial and resurrection is made afresh to us this morning. So I invite you to take the bread or the cracker, whatever you have, as a remembrance of his body. And then we take together the cup which represents the blood of Jesus that was shed for us, given for us, so that we would know that life-giving truth. So we take this in remembrance and thanksgiving of the blood that was shed by Jesus for us. Amen. I'm just going to pray as we have a time of reflection. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful opportunity that even though we are separated by distance, yet we are joined together in our common faith. Thank you that those of us who have put our trust in the Lord Jesus, we are in the Messiah 
thank you, Lord, that you have incorporated us in, in the Lord Jesus. And Jesus, thank you that you are our Savior. Thank you that you shed your blood for us. Thank you that your body was broken for us. Thank you, Lord, you went to the cross. You suffered there and died, bearing in our place the sin and shame. And Lord, death could not hold you. The grave could not hold you. You rose again on the third day, and now you live forevermore. You are at the right hand of glory, mm -hmm. and we just praise you, Lord. Thank you that as we come to you with penitent hearts, trusting in what you've done for us, thank you that there is forgiveness and cleansing, Lord, in your precious blood. Yeah. And we thank you with all our hearts, Lord. We thank you. Thank you that even though as a congregation we are separated because of the present crisis, Lord, thank you that we can come together. Thank you that we are present together with you. Thank you that you live in our hearts, Lord. Thank you that you give us strength for this day and for the coming week. Hmm. We ask your blessing, Lord, upon all who are taking part in this service, watching with us, and with our families, Lord, and those we love and the wider community. Lord, we ask your blessing. We cry out to you, Lord, in your hmm. mercy, hear our prayer. In yeah. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks, Don. Apologies if you had a little glitch on your live stream. The camera decided to turn itself off. <laughs> but hopefully um, I can see that we're, we're back online. Well, I'm going to share uh, from God's word um, for the next 15, 20 minutes. We're going to be looking at the Lord's Prayer. As, we, as I was thinking, sorry, through this week, I was preparing of what to share. And my mind went back to our verse for the year which was from Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, which tells us to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. And as I was reading that, I was reading in the verses around and my eyes were really drawn to the Lord's Prayer. And we said the Lord's Prayer last week at the end of our service. It's not something we do as a regular kind of ritual per se uh, at New Life, but we say it often at weddings and, and funerals um, and in our services and in our own personal prayer life. But this is a very poignant prayer, especially for the situation we're in at the moment, and a prayer that Jesus says, this is how you should pray. And I think if Jesus says, this is how you should pray, it would be good for us to take a look at it. So I've got to try and get through the whole Lord's Prayer in 20 minutes, which I'm not going to do it full justice, but let's spend some time looking at that together. So if you've got your Bibles or your, your tablets or whatever, then um, turn to Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to be reading verses 9 through to 13. Matthew 6 verses 9 through to 13. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive, or as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And then in the NIV it adds in, For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lord's Prayer. Jesus says this is how you should pray. In the preceding verses, verses 5 to 8, Jesus brings two challenges and he's correcting people for saying, first of all, look at me, look how great my prayers are. I go to the temple and I, I'm raising my hands and everybody can see of these wonderful prayers that I pray. And the second thing he challenges us about, and the listener at the time, was babbling like the pagans. Going on and on with these big lengthy prayers, making a big discourse to make out how big and good and righteous and holy you are. Jesus says, Stop babbling like the pagans. This is how you should pray. I remember several years ago, we were praying before bed with our children. I was praying with Elizabeth. And we were praying for someone who wasn't very well. And I said to Elizabeth, why don't we pray for this person? And so she did. And these, this was simply her prayer. Lord Jesus, would you make so and so better? In the name of Jesus, amen. Simple as that. And I stood back for a minute and I thought, Tom, how often do you babble? How often do you make these lengthy prayers and not just get to the point to ask the Lord? And that genuine childlike faith shone through at that moment. Lord Jesus, would you heal 
in Jesus' name. So the Lord's Prayer breaks down into sort of five categories that I want to take us through this morning. First of all, in verse 9, it says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. First of all, we understand that he is the Almighty. He is the Almighty. There was a young boy who was uh, at school and in their reception class were asked to do a drawing of their favourite thing, the thing that captured their imagination. Draw anything that makes you excited and you want to put down on paper so the children got their paper and their pens. They were very excited to have this time. And it came to the end and the teacher was collecting in all the pictures that had been drawn. But a little boy at the back was carrying on drawing and the teacher said, Johnny, the the time has finished to draw your picture. And he said, no, I haven't finished yet. And so she came over very gently, put her arm around the young boy and said, what are you trying to draw? God, he answered. And the teacher said, well, not many people, we don't really know what God looks like. So how are you drawing God? And the little boy replies, well, by the time I finished, everybody will know. (laughs) And that was the story of him trying to capture the greatness and the power and the wonder of God. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14, you'll remember, hopefully, about a month ago, I was preaching on this, and it opens with these words, I kneel before the Father. I kneel before the Father, and I shared that that sense of kneeling in awe and wonder, but also it's not before a distant deity, but before our Father, because those who are in Christ, adopted into his family, can call him Father. And this is the picture we get right at the beginning of the Lord's Prayer. In Ecclesiastes 5 verse 2, we're reminded of this awe. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. We can be in awe of the greatness and the power and the sovereignty of God. Right at the beginning, Jesus says, fix your eyes upon God. Lift up your eyes. Hallowed be his name. He is the God in heaven. Psalm 24 reminds us, lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. And in Judges chapter 13, verse 18, Manoah, uh, inquiring of the name of of this encounter that they had, uh, who would be the parents of Samson, ask the name. And the reply comes, why do you ask my name? It is beyond understanding. Or another uh, translation of that would put, or too wonderful to understand. He is the God Almighty. Hallowed be his name. We are in awe of him. He's the God of heaven and earth. We lift up our eyes to him but we can also call him Father. A few, well, a few years ago, several years ago, the uh, trip went into space where the astronauts were exploring and they came back down and said these famous words, we've explored space, we've gone around the earth, we've seen space and we've not seen God. Nowhere to be found, we never saw God. (laughs) And a very wise, sharp American pastor said, Well, perhaps if they stepped out of their spacesuits, they may well have met God. God is in heaven. We are on earth. In the Old Testament, in Hebrew, there's many names for God. I'm no Hebrew scholar, but let me share with you some. El, meaning the mighty one. El Shaddai, God almighty, our salvation. Elohim, which is plural and looks at the fullness of his power. Elion, the most high. Adonai, God, my master, when Moses stands before God and says, my Lord, my God, I cannot speak. God has asked him to go before Pharaoh. Moses says, Adonai, God, my master, I cannot speak. And Jehovah, I am that I am. Hendrickson, William Hendrickson, a Bible commentator, quotes this when he is reflecting on these words from from the Lord's Prayer. He says, he who is king of his kingdom of heaven is at the same time the father of its citizens. He who is king of his kingdom of heaven is at the same time father of its citizens. Those who are in Christ, you and I, adopted into his family, 
We are his citizens. He is the Almighty watching over us. Secondly, he is the builder of his kingdom. Verse 10, uh, where it talks about um, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Friends, God is at work in the chaos. He is at work right now, even amidst the chaos of us here on earth. God is sovereign. He's still building his kingdom. And we know that he is not absent. We know that he is not distant. He is in control of all things. Not our plans, but God's plans. Notice what it says. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And friends, how much do we need to be assured and to be learning and teaching and speaking to ourselves the truth that we need God's kingdom to come on earth at this time. We need and we've been praying for revival, for a move of God in our nation. And the question I asked for this morning is, can God turn this situation around for good? Well, the answer is yes. God can turn this situation of coronavirus, this pandemic, for good, for his purposes. I don't believe for one minute that God created this virus. But I do know that God is not absent from the chaos. He is with us. And he's building his kingdom, even as we very speak and as we're connected this morning. God is building his kingdom. Are we hearing from him? And there's a now and not yet tension, isn't there? The kingdom now, but there is also the wonderful kingdom to come where he will make all things new. He will wipe away every tear from our eyes. There'll be no more pain or suffering. No sickness. He will make all things new. But until that day, we are seeing God's kingdom being established in our day and generation as it has been done for thousands of years. And he is building his kingdom. Even amongst the chaos, he is working. He's the master builder. Thirdly, he's our provider. Verse 11 says, give us today our daily bread. Notice that it says daily bread. Link this to Matthew chapter 6 verse 34, just after our verse for the year. It says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Give us today our daily bread. Now, many of us who are gathering this morning, rightly so and understandably, are worried, concerned. What's our financial situation going to be? Will I have a job? What will happen to my income, my, my house, even our health? These things are natural to worry about, and I understand that. There's times where I've been concerned about that myself. But we're reminded of our verse for the year. And I think it's amazing. God gave us that verse for the year. We didn't know this was going to happen. But it caused us to lift our eyes to his kingdom and his purposes, and to seek first his kingdom and righteousness, and everything else will be added unto us. So my prayer, my, my encouragement, and my challenge is fix your eyes upon God. Seek first his kingdom and he will provide your daily bread for today. There's the story of George Muller. I've shared this many a time and I'll shorten the story for time's sake. George Muller was uh, a Christian back in the uh, 18th century, but his background was he was an alcoholic. He was a violent man. He was a very foul-mouthed man and he was a gambler. And he came over from Germany felt the call of the Lord upon his life and started to minister here in England. And long story short, he set up many orphanages. In fact, so many orphanages um, that it outweighs much of what happened in his day. He was such a, a instigator of bringing children out of such poverty and bringing them into a home. And not just a home, but a home of Christian teaching. And he distributed Bible teachings and Bibles and gave these children a safe place to live. And the story goes that George Muller never asked for a penny for his ministry. He lived entirely by faith. He really did seek first the kingdom of God in his truest sense. And the story goes one day like this. The, the uh, chefs in the kitchen came to George Muller and said, we don't have any bread or milk for the children this morning for breakfast. What are we going to do? And George Muller says, <laughs> pray. How much do we wish our response was like that? <laughs> Pray, seek first his kingdom. And so they prayed. Long story short, for time's sake. A knock at the door. George Muller goes to answer that door. 
That was a bit of a rubbish knock, wasn't it? We need a bit more of a, <laughs> a, bit more of a knocking tap. George Muller goes to answer the door and it's the man who takes the milk around the town and his milk float had broken down outside the orphanage where George Muller was. And the milkman said, if I leave my milk float here until someone comes, the milk will just go off in this heat. Would you like some more milk? Could you take this off my hands? <laughs> First answer to prayer. Short time later, the bread man comes and he says, Mr. Muller, I felt last night when I was baking bread to bake extra bread and to bring it and deliver it to you this morning. Do you want some extra bread? George Muller had his prayers answered. Those children had their prayers answered. They seek first his kingdom and everything else will be added unto them. He is our provider. Number four, he is our salvation. In verse 12, it says, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Forgive us, it's a cry based on absolute dependence on God's grace through Jesus, our once for all sacrifice. Jesus has paid it in full. You and I are forgiven, we're in Christ because of Jesus' death, burial and resurrection. And if you don't know Jesus as your saviour, don't know that he gave his life for you, you can know him. You can know of his great love and grace. Jesus was our once for all sacrifice. And this part of the Lord's Prayer is twofold. It says, forgive us, there's a sense of repentance, but secondly, forgive others so that we can forgive others. I've quoted Spurgeon several times in the last few weeks, and I don't know whether he'll be happy with me when I meet him in glory. He might have a copyright on this and start charging me. But I came across this quote from Charles Haddon Spurgeon, the Victorian preacher, and he says this, I'm throwing all my good works overboard and lashing myself to the plank of free grace, for I hope to swim to glory on it. Your good works do not save you, but the gift of grace can and will rescue and redeem. And Charles Haddon Spurgeon is saying, I'm chucking all of my own works overboard, but I'm clinging to the plank of free grace and that will sustain me and get me to eternity, to heaven, to glory. The disciples replying to Jesus when Jesus said to them, are you still with me? My teaching's quite difficult. Lots of people had left Jesus. And the disciples replied, well, where else can we go, Lord? Who else holds the words of eternal life? Friends, he is our salvation. He's forgiven you. And today you can forgive others. And at this time where we've got spare time on our hands, as it were. Perhaps this morning you could reflect, are there those relationships that have broken down? Are there those areas that you need to apologise into? Put things right. Forgive others. And also, maybe you struggle to accept the forgiveness of the Father through Jesus. And I, my prayer, my encouragement and challenge to us this morning is that we would know the grace of Jesus and that grace would overflow from our lives into those around us. Number five, finally, we hit verse 13 and it says, deliver us from the evil one and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one rather. In Psalm 91, Don read this at the beginning. It says, surely he will save, he will deliver you from the fowler's snare. Now that's not John and Mim, okay? <laughs> that would be eisegesis. That's reading something that's not there. But it's saying he will rescue you, he will deliver you from the snare of the enemy. He has rescued us and will continue to rescue us. Rescue us. This is what we call sustained by grace. We are saved by grace and we're also sustained by grace. When pressure increases, temptation looks easier, doesn't it? When the stresses of life increase and we're in a stressful situation right now our anxieties our worries we have more time on our hands temptation can increase and the bible reminds us that the devil the enemy is prowling around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour he's looking for opportunity and peter reminds us to resist him to stand firm and put our trust and our eyes upon jesus and ask him to deliver us from the evil one have you ever played that game stuck in the mud Maybe you played it when you're at school and, or maybe you still play it today with your kids. And it's the game where you're playing tag, as it were, and, it, and when you tag someone, they get stuck and they're in the mud. There's no moving them until one of the other people who's already free can come and free that person and says, free. 
Well, friends, Jesus has freed us. We were stuck, we were held down in our mess. Jesus has freed us. But we also recognise that we're a work in progress. And that's why this prayer says, deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation. Rescue us. Because there's times in our lives where we struggle and we're tempted and we can give in. Resist and know that Jesus is there to help you. Pray that prayer if you're struggling this morning. This is the nearness of Jesus and his goodness and his kindness to us. As I close, friends, we're in, as the politicians have told us, unprecedented times, uncharted waters, but we are children of a present, loving and strong Heavenly Father who loves us. And Jesus gave us this prayer and says, this is how you should pray. We have got an open window of much opportunity in this chaos like never before. We are streaming our services online. We're able to engage with our community. We're able to share the truth of God's love and grace. And through this Lord's Prayer, I hope that it's encouraged you this morning. I hope it's given you a, a, a glimpse and, and a sense of wonder and awe of our Heavenly Father who provides for us, who delivers us, who is all that we need, who is our salvation, a present help in time of need. And friends, let me encourage you to seek first his kingdom. And may God, your kingdom come and your glory fill the whole earth as we look to be a light for you. In Jesus' name, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your goodness. And as we've read the Lord's Prayer, we may have read it many times, but Lord, we're reminded this morning that you are God in heaven, so hallowed be your name. Deliver us, Lord. We acknowledge you're our salvation, you're our provider, you're the Almighty. And Lord, in this chaos, in this difficulty, would you help us to seek first your kingdom, to fix our eyes upon you, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Don's just going to close our time together. It's been great to have you with us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. And Don, leave it to you to close. Let's pray. Lord, I think it's right for us to simply say, yours, Lord, is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. And Lord, we look to you this week this day and in the days of this coming week for our daily bread. For our, thank you that you meet our needs, Lord. Thank you also that your word is open to us. Um, in your word it says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us the scriptures. You speak to us through them. And Lord, you speak to us into our hearts as we seek you. And Lord, I pray that everybody watching this this morning will resolve day by day this week to seek you lord to spend time with you we have more time on our hands most of us in this crisis and we have time to seek your face lord on a daily basis thank you that you provide meet our needs and thank you that you provide for us spiritual food as well lord thank you you speak to us you speak into our hearts you direct us and we pray lord that that will be that each of us will have that testimony as this week goes on that we have heard from you lord that you have spoken into our daily life Bless Tom and Kaylee and, and his children, Lord, and Paul and Juana and little Zion, and all, all the others and the rest of the staff, Lord, and all of the members of New Life Church, and we pray for New Milton. Lord, we just ask your blessing upon us all as a community. Thank you, that Jesus, that you are our deliverer from all evil and from all danger. You are our mighty God and protection. We just praise you now, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to finish with In Christ Alone. We're just going to sing the first two verses uh, together as we fix our eyes upon him as we uh, go about the rest of our day. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my soul. This cornerstone. This solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, where fears 
Christ alone who took on flesh. In Christ alone who took on flesh. Fullness of God in helpless babe. This gift of love and righteousness. Scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross as Jesus died. God bless you all. Have a great rest of the day. Stay safe. And we'll see you again for our live stream next week.